What's up, everybody? Sunday Sessions, episode 45, here to deliver a ton of insight and value into operating, growing, scaling an Amazon FBA wholesale business. For anybody who's this your first time joining, my name is Eric Castellano. I'm the owner of Amazon Lit. Super excited to be here. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Let's not forget what Memorial Day weekend is for, is to honor those who've passed away serving our military and armed forces. So shout out to all of you who've served for our country. It means a lot. But we're ready to get rocking here. Any questions, let them rock. Let them rip. I'm here to provide insight and value. Uh, what made us get our own warehouse instead of using a prep center? Um, so speed, efficiency, and quality control. You know, we can produce inventory much faster than a prep center can because it's only our inventory. I'm not prep prepping anybody else's. I don't, there's no line to get my inventory out the door. My inventory is the only inventory getting out the door, right? Also, I have a lot more control on my prep costs because I, I can eliminate employees, add employees, cut expenses, increase expenses, and get that prep cost to where I really want it to be. And then thirdly, quality control. I know that if there's a mistake that happens in my fulfillment center, it gets sent to Amazon. I don't have to call anybody else. I don't have to communicate the issue to a prep center. I literally just walk downstairs and I say, hey, what happened here? And how do we fix it so it never happens again? Right? Because I don't care that it happened. Mistakes happen. We're all human. We're fallible. Right? We make mistakes. So instead of beating them up and saying, hey, you messed this up. It's like, no, no, no. Let's. What's the solution for this? Please come to a solution and we'll implement the solution immediately so this never happens again. And usually the solution is communication. 99.9% .9 of my problems in business, in life, in family, and friendships come from a lack of communication. If you're openly communicating your issues, concerns, and problems within your business, it eliminates a lot of them from happening. Two to three biggest benefits you saw moving out of this space and into Sebastian's warehouse. Yeah, so I just reviewed some of them. Quality control was a huge benefit, as well as controlling the prep process. And then also, because it was our first space, we had a bay door. We were able to begin sending out LTL shipments without having to get pay for any lift gate services fees. And we were even allowed to start sending out LTL shipments, which was massive. And we were able to open up brand new wholesale accounts for companies that only ship to warehouses, right? And not residential address. Since a lot of Amazon prep center operators are sellers themselves, wouldn't you be worried they'll start working with your suppliers and wholesalers? I'm sure they have some sort of NDA you can ask them to sign. Um, but if they're doing that, they're fucking shitty people. And there's no way around shitty people. Shitty people will always exist. Right? But if you're working with a prep center, you find out they're stealing your suppliers. <laughs> so I highly encourage only working with prep centers that you either know somebody who's done business with them before. So you have like an in, right? You have someone who's qualified to say, hey, I've been working with them for a year. Also doing a thorough review on Google, looking for any Google reviews that may be negative and also jumping on the phone and having a phone call with them to feel them out. I mean, my opinion about Amazon Mexico is, yeah, I like it. Um, the only thing we don't participate in is NARF, North American Remote Fulfillment, because we find we get a lot of uh, account health issues in those other countries that we can't really deal with because each country has got its own specific rules and regulations when it comes to selling products. I didn't hire my first VA until we were probably doing I don't know, $20 million in sales is just because we never really leveraged VAs in the beginning. Now we have a few of them. You know, there's nobody like me to, to teach me eight, nine years ago. <laughs> there was no Amazon lit eight, nine years ago to run the game. I had to figure this shit out for myself. There's no YouTube channels. There's no Facebook groups. There's no courses. There's no Instagrams. None of that shit. Right. So a lot of, a lot of this is self-taught through trials and tribulations, which is, huge value resource and asset for myself as an individual, as well as people in our community. We've been through it all. I recommend hiring a VA when you need one, right? When, when your time is running thin and having someone else assist you in the day-to-day -day will allow you to focus on growing the business instead of the day-to-day -day business, right? So some great things that people use VAs for initially are data sorting, supplier research, not outreach, but research, and then also product sourcing, right? Those are some like of the basic fundamentals that 
sellers use virtual assistants for. But it's very common, and it happens all the time, that people think they can just hire VAs and they're going to run the entire business for them, right? But there's so many touch points that you need to have with these virtual assistants. So many touch points. If you don't have a lot of touch points with your virtual assistants, they're going to underperform. I help a lot of businesses. I work with some really big guys as well. Some of these big sellers, they have 40, 50, 60 virtual assistants overseas. And one of my buying team purchases more inventory than their 40, 50 virtual assistants. One person on my team purchases more inventory than their 30, 40, or 50 virtual assistants. Let me say that one more time. One person on my buying team purchases more inventory than them with their 30, 40, 50 virtual assistants. It's all about training. Would you recommend leveraging business credit for capital issues just to increase revenue? This is coming from someone who is already making sales but trying to scale efficiently. Absolutely, but you don't want to leverage credit just to increase revenue. Right? You got to be making profits as well. So as long as it's profitable revenue, then absolutely. And I'm a firm believer that we take on products with suppliers that maybe are making us no money or maybe only making us 50 cents. Typically, we don't take on products that are losing. But I'm a firm believer that taking on inventory to grow the relationship is a huge component to really securing the relationships that you need to secure to get the growth you want to experience. But it can't be your only business model is buying unprofitable inventory to build relationships. You got to have profitable inventory in there. So yes, I highly recommend leveraging business credit. A great business credit card is the Amex Plum. It gives you a 60-day payment grace window, which essentially means you could buy the inventory, get it to Amazon, sell the inventory, get a disbursement back into your bank account and pay off the credit card with the money from the sale of the product. Oh, so ways to plan for ASD. Pop into asdonline.com, pop open their vendor directory, and you start researching the products. Now you can sort by e-commerce friendly, um, but what I've noticed at ASD is sometimes companies will put not e-commerce friendly, and really they are. They just don't want a bunch of e-commerce sellers running up to them. I know if I was going to be exhibiting at ASD, my wholesale company, I would put not e-commerce friendly because I don't want a bunch of brand new sellers running up to me who know absolutely nothing about Amazon trying to open wholesale accounts because from from real experience of owning a wholesale company, new sellers who don't understand the vocabulary, the vernacular, the way to grow relationships, how to submit purchase orders, they're a nightmare to deal with. They're literally a nightmare to deal with. And that's another reason why we offer like the trade show walkthrough, right, is to take brand new sellers or sellers who've never been to a trade show and show them how to navigate the show floor. So you want to review that vendor directory, pop open their websites, right, do your research and make a game plan of companies you definitely want to connect with while you're at ASD. Also, because you're about three months out, you can start emailing them now. Hey, I'll be at ASD in August. I'm very excited to come stop by and meet you in person. I'd love to start the relationship beforehand. Can you please send me an account catalog along with any account applications so I can start placing orders immediately? Look forward to seeing you in August, right? A simple email like that, bickety bam, just like that. Listen, take notes from, from, from some of these people in here, right? Don't listen to what people say, watch what people do. I'm a firm believer in that because people could talk out their ass all day. I see it all the time on, on Instagram and social media. It's just, blah, 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 blah. and then when like I investigate these companies and like, you know, they, they don't even sell online or whatever the case may be. Right. But like the, the Shamari in here, he's in the, in the YouTube right now, like dudes, dudes everywhere. Met him for, he joined these sellers around, met him for the first time. He came to ASD. Not only did he come to ASD, but he kept messaging me and offering if I, and, and saying, hey, do you need any help? Where do I need to be? You know, do you need help setting up? You need, like, that is fucking cool, right? So, like, don't listen to what people say. Watch what they do. And then, boom, who's at Expo or who's at Sweets and Snacks show last week? Shamari, right? Who's getting tickets to Ecom Summit in Chicago? Shamari, right? So, if I had to guess who's going to do really well on Amazon, I would guess Shamar is going to do really well on Amazon just because he's taking the action. Yo, Derek, what's up? I saw you crush it the other day, but this is, see, this is social media again, Derek, because we saw you post that $15,000 win on that slot machine, but I don't know how much it costs for you to get that, you know, because I know me, I'll go to Vegas and I'll post my $3,000 win. But what I didn't talk about was the $4,000 I had to put on the table or the machine to get $3,000 back. So really, I'm down a G stack. But yeah, Derek, man, I see you're having a nice time with your wife out there. You got the Rolls Royce, man. You're living it up. 
Proud of you, man. 6046K. Down? I don't even want to know, bro. <laughs> don't even. Don't even. I almost went to the casino yesterday. I was considering it. We ended up going to Belmar instead and just eating and, and chilling out. But I was like only 20 minutes from Philly and, and I forgot what casino's over there. I think it's Sparks or something. And I almost went, but. I passed on it. Happy Memorial Day. Also, if you're a veteran and you served, I'm giving 20% off for the next seven days for East Sellers Rye. Only if you're a veteran, if you served in the military, right? Or any of the armed forces, really. It doesn't have to be the military. Any of the armed forces. You send me a DM. I'll send you a link. It'll be 20% off East Sellers Rye. I've never given a discount off of our community, but I value people who've served for our country, right? The only reason I'm able to have the freedom that we have is because of you. So I appreciate that. I respect that. I've never, ever, ever given a discount on my program. And it's actually about to go up 2000 bucks in the next two or three months from three to 5000 um, But I got a lot of respect and love for you women and, and men who've served for our armed forces. Met you at ASD, FBA, John. Awesome. We'll be there again this year. I'm, I'm there every year, August and February, every year at ASD. February, we do a big event couple hundred people, Amazon sellers all get together. Um, but the August trade show, uh, we do trade show walkthroughs. So if you've never been in a trade show and you're part of our community, you're open to do the walkthrough. Um, and essentially we walk around the trade show floor, give you a packet on how to navigate it. It's really cool. Yeah, best event in February, Resort World. Met so many of your team members and it was exciting. Absolutely, FBA John, man. It's really cool. It's really cool. And the Amazon community is such a powerhouse community. It's so supportive. It's so encouraging. Um, it's just really an amazing community, you know. And, and like I was saying earlier in the call, I'm going to be in Austin on Wednesday to Saturday of this coming week, and and, uh, and I'm going to put together like a meetup impromptu, right? I'm probably going to advertise for it the day before. Not even advertise. I think actually my brother he manages my email marketing. I think he sent out an email just yesterday about it. Right. But basically what I'm going to do is Wednesday, I'm going to say, hey, meet us at this restaurant on Friday night in Austin. And I guarantee you 40 or 50 people are going to show up. Right. It's going to be so cool. Um, so the link for the beginners course, which we used to sell, it's now free. Um, if you go to our bio on Instagram and you click our link tree, it is the second one from the bottom. It says Amazon Wholesale Beginner's Guide. It's 22 videos. It will take you about an hour and 15 minutes to watch. Um, but it's going to teach you a lot about the game. Now, are you going to build, be able to build a multi-million dollar business out of our beginner's bundle? Absolutely not. But if you never sold on Amazon or you're just getting started, is it going to teach you a few things that are going to make you better at what you're doing? A hundred percent. Does it cost you anything? No. Except for your time, which is our most valuable resource. Sometimes, a lot of times, I pay a lot of money to get my time back. But in this case, you don't have to pay shit because it's free. Anybody considering, you know, going to at Econ Summit in Chicago or AMZ United or ASD, like there's a few things to consider. First of all, it's a business expense. You get to get to deduct it against your taxable income at the end of the year, right? Because it's getting deducted from that, um, which is cool because essentially the way I see it, it's like you get a 33% discount on it when you're using it on a business credit card, Right. B, it helps you level up, surround yourself with other sellers in the community and learn from them, right? Learn from them. I've been in the game for 10 years. The day I start saying, hey, Eric's got all the answers. Eric's a know-it-all. Eric has every solution is the day I stop growing. So I will never stop learning. I'm always continuing to learn and grow. It's the foundation of my growth and my livelihood as a human, right? I got to always continue to educate and level up. It's super important to me. So we highly encourage getting to some of these trade shows, right? Is it going to cost you a little money? Yes. Do I suggest doing it if it's going to hurt your business? No, right? But if you're at a decision where you're like, oh man, should I go? Should I not go? Sales are good. Go. Where do you find pickers and packers locally when first getting into the warehouse? Yeah, a Craigslist um, is good. Also, if you have any local newspapers, that's a big one as well. Um, and then the goal is once you start getting one or two good employees, ask them if they have, you know, friends or family members that are looking for employment opportunities. Yeah, I'll be at ASD this August, 100%. I've been at ASD, I think, 
twice a year for the past like four or five years. It's probably my like 10th time going to ASD since in Vegas. So I get to be a little degenerate like, like Derek's being right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, my friends, I'm breaking out of here. I'm gonna go hit the gym and gonna pick up a buddy of mine. I'll hang out with him for a little bit. One last thing too. It's Memorial Day weekend, right? So don't forget what the purpose of Memorial Day weekend is for. Is to celebrate those who died in our armed forces. Right? A lot of partying happens. It's very easy to get it misconstrued what the purpose for Monday is. It's to recognize the people who've given their lives for this beautiful country that we have. I talk to people from all over the world. People want to come to America. It's the land opportunity, absolutely. Now, do you have some shitty people like what Governor DeSantis is doing in Florida? Absolutely. But there's also a ton of opportunity here. So shout out to everybody who served. And we appreciate you. Everybody drive safe as well. You know, historically, a very, very heavy drinking and driving weekend. So just be safe on the streets. All right? Most importantly, stay grateful and stay lit. Adios, my friends. Have a beautiful day.